Afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to this session at Africa Energy Week at 2023. It's great to be here. It's a bit like being a, a teacher in class. Everybody's sitting at the back of the back of the classroom, but that's we, we, as long as you can hear us, that's uh, that's great. Um, we're here to talk about uh, about the role of natural gas. If you were there this morning in the session, you'd have heard a lot of quite passionate uh, speeches and facts and figures. Um, that, that tended towards uh, natural gas, Africa's natural gas resources being a, a very important pillar in, in its own industrialization. Let's for the moment say that the transition there is, is towards industrialization with um, the world's largest population, working age population by 2040. It's certainly uh, something that, that, that has to be gaining pace and getting a move on. So today's session is called The Game Changer. It's examining uh, African gas opportunities. I'm delighted to introduce you, the panel, who are going to work through this with me today. Uh, so joining me from, and I go left to, to right, I have Bellamino Chitanguelica, who's executive director for AMPG. And next to him, I have Emmanuel Mergani, who's the MD of Sahara Group. And last but not least, uh, last minute replacement, I do appreciate you coming along, Mike Anderson, SVP of External Affairs for Cosmos. So welcome panel. So I think, um, I think all three of us had sat through, all four of us sat through uh, the, the, the ministerial addresses this morning. Uh, a lot of focus on gas. Um, certainly a lot of opportunities uh, were identified, but I wonder if we could just for a few moments do that scene set and just think about those opportunities and the aspirations that are accompanying them, and then we'll get on into how we actually make this happen. Um, I may as well start immediately to, to my left, Bellamino. Uh, opportunities, the Angolan perspective. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, glad to be here today. and. Um, representing uh, the National Petroleum Gas and Biofuel Agency, which is a concessionaire uh, in Angola, also the regulator for all upstream activity. Uh, looking at gas for us, um, a little bit of history, uh, we didn't have much focus on gas in the past. Uh, whenever we found the gas, we called the well dry hole because we didn't have any use for it. Uh, now we regret that we left so much behind, but we are catching up. Um, aspiration, we have already some projects that are uh, supplying gas to the international market, also as well as the uh, domestic one. Um, going forward, we would like, it, uh, in terms of uh, economy, economic diversification, uh, we want also guys to be um, part of um, uh, manufacturing of uh, fertilizers and also uh, to improve, to have an ample supply of guys for the community uh, so that uh, we can uh, alleviate um, um, we can alleviate um, uh, energy poverty, basically, mm -hmm. because um, most of the population use the biomass, and this is not good for the environment anyway. So we will be uh, using gas to, uh, to in, in order to, to accomplish that uh, on the, uh, the side of uh, uh, um, protecting uh, the environment as well. Um, we have a um, guys on uh, LNG form at the moment which we support and we have opportunities to add to the same plant more uh, trains as well as we are committed to, uh, to have another form of gas in terms of um, compressed natural gas 
Uh, so this, those are aspirations at the moment we have with God. So, so a lot of opportunity. So your, your aspirations literally are in, in, in every part of that, for, from, from export to domestic, domestic. use, for, for presumably for electricity and power, but then onwards into, into value-add finished products like fertilizers Correct. and petrochem. Okay, brilliant. So um, I'll come along to you next, uh, Bellamino. I presume you'll bring a, a very interesting... Me. I've got Emmanuel, sorry. I, I presume you'll bring a slightly different perspective. You've obviously got a lot of um, pedigree there in Sahara Group in Nigeria, but you've also been uh, working other countries as well within your portfolio. Yes. So, I mean, Sahara Group today is already a leading player in gas. We operate all over the African continent and support that with you know, offices around the world. So, I mean, looking at opportunities for us, really, uh, for gas, we view that as a key you know, peace for transitioning into the future. Everybody's talking about, you know, net zero and how that will be achieved, and we believe that the opportunities will come from gas. Now, a lot of people tend to focus on a lot of discussion more around the export. So there's a lot of discussion around LNG projects and the rest to export, you know, gas from Africa to the rest of the world. But I think more interestingly is to focus on how gas can drive Africa's industrial development. If you look at it, Africa has a huge population that is very young and industrialization is key. Most countries in Africa today use coal or diesel for electricity, which you know, uh, doesn't give them the industrial base or the kind of energy base to, to grow and you know, gas would be key to that. So for instance, Nigeria today that has over 200 TCF of gas, you know, quite a bit of that you know, uh, is hoped to be consumed domestically, and I think there's some analysts that have said, you know, given where we are today, Nigeria might be consuming most of its gas within the next 10 years or so, so quite a bit of investment needs to go into unlocking more of that, not just to fill, you know, the West Africa gas pipeline, but also projects like the Nigeria to Morocco gas line that has been envisaged to support drive industrialization across the continent. It's so interesting, you add into the, uh, the opportunities there, the opportunity to decarbonize, um, and, and it's basically displacement of, uh, of, of oil and coal from, from the generating uh, cycle. Uh, and I guess this morning we heard also other opportunities for decarbonization, such as slowing down or halting uh, deforestation by, by, by enabling clean fuel uh, to reach people who would otherwise be burning charcoal. Um, last but not least, Mike, you represent a company that w was once a prolific explorer in Africa and is now um, really focusing and doubling down on production. What, what's your view on the opportunity, the aspiration? Uh, thanks, Mike, and thanks for being on the, uh, for welcoming us to the panel. And uh, I was thinking before we came on the panel, uh, our friend Greta Thunberg is, is demonstrating as we speak in London against fossil fuels uh, at a different conference, while there are people outside here demonstrating for the need for energy. And I think that is a real juxtaposition of the false debate that has been raging in Europe and the real debate that is now taking place in Africa. And the title of this uh, panel is about gas as a game changer. And I think we as a company see it in three different modes why, why gas is a game changer. Uh, first of all, rather sadly, we have a, uh, a war in Ukraine, Russia, and the requirement for LNG in Europe and across the world is clearly deeply elevated. This is a massive opportunity for Africa, uh, particularly in a place where we've discovered we found 100 trillion G uh, GCF of gas uh, offshore Senegal and Mauritania. It's very low carbon. I'll even say it's 40% uh, lower carbon than US LNG, it's 25% lower carbon than Qatari LNG, uh, and it's much nearer to Europe. That is a huge opportunity, game-changing opportunity, hello, Minister, for an export uh, to Europe and around the world. So there's a massive export opportunity, global, uh, actually helping the world with the transition fuel. Secondly, there's a, a major advantage to any of the countries producing gas and LNG because they are able to bring in the revenues uh, begin industrialization in places where it's not so high, use the gas for all the purposes that we've talked about, from fertilizers to building new power plants 
to developing the country in a way that the West has had that opportunity for the last hundred years. And the third way I'd say it was a game changer, an opportunity, is in relation to the people that we've talked about. We heard a lot about that this morning. And any uh, gas project in Africa today run by companies such as ourselves with our partners BP or with the national companies SMH and Mauritania and Petrosen in, in Senegal are also very much looking at domestic needs which my uh, colleagues on the panel have talked about. So it will be a real game changer for those people who don't have power. So we see it in three categories, game changer for the world in energy security, game changer for the country in revenue industrialization and a new approach, and game changer for the populations in finally providing the energy they need with a relatively low carbon fuel and gas significantly better than heavy fuel oil. And it, it, it's very interesting that you bring up the game changer for the world, that Africa can continue to power the world as, as, as it has done for, uh, for pretty much the entire existence of hydrocarbon uh, exploration production. Um, and, and you also brought up the war in Ukraine. Of course, we've recently seen the impact of something even more uh, close, which is the Eastern Mediterranean uh, conflicts now, uh, Israel and Gaza. That's had the effect of, in the short term, but potentially taking off... Um, six to nine standard cargoes off the market and preventing Egypt from restarting its exports because of uh, because they're now... If, if, if I may, Mike, there's a diversification issue there at the moment for gas and LNG. The US, Qatar and Australia produce about 80%. Uh, we found with Russia providing a certain percentage, that wasn't necessarily a good place to go. You need as much diversification as possible. And I think that's the other point that you're that you're making there. Diversification from Africa with the quality of gas that it has clearly is a benefit globally. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm very pleased to welcome uh, to, to the panel as well His Excellency uh, Bruno Jean-Richard Etour, uh, the, the Minister of Hydrocarbons for Congo. Uh, Minister, w welcome, to, welcome to the panel um, and thanks for joining us. It's, it's great you could make it. We're just doing a little bit of scene setting at the moment. We're talking um, this morning, many, many ministers, including yourself, uh, spoke passionately about uh, Africa's right to industrialize using uh, a number of resources, including uh, natural gas. So we're just scene setting around the opportunities and aspirations. I wondered if you wanted to just join that scene setter on behalf of Congo. Thank you very much. It's uh, really my, my, my pleasure to be part of this panel because I think today speaking about transition, energy transition, even if you say gas and equitable and so and so and so, gas is really a big part of this uh, energy transition. And once again, it's an opportunity uh, for, for Africa because Africa will be a key player for that gas new challenge. So I think the first thing, we have maybe um, to be clear about the vision we have about gas in Africa. Is one, once again, gas just a new natural resource for exporting, exporting uh, to, to, to outside market, international market? Then at the same time, African population are missing gas. Is it that the vision? Because we did that for, for a long time for the other, other natural resources. Are we going to do the same thing? I'm saying that because we, we are dealing with that issue now, that topic now in our negotiation with uh, IOC working in Congo Brazzaville. So the, 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 the question of the, the domestic market, I don't like domestic markets as, as I don't think it's the right word. The, the issue is not domestic markets. The issue is African market. What, what would be African market involved as big part? Why not as priority in that new gas challenges? And I, I was very happy to hear what has been said this morning by President Obasanjo, even just now by uh, Gazprom during the presentation. At the time, we're exporting so much gas already, Africa is still missing gas. So we, it must be clear. 
that we are not going to start again a new process of junk exporting and then missing everything in the, in the same time, missing access to electricity because gas can provide electricity. Gas to power is one of the main, main, main target issues we have in Congo, especially. Gas can provide so many other things for industry, fertilizers, and so, and so, and so. So this is something we must be clear in Africa, and I, I, I love the idea of having an uh, African Council for, 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 for transition and, and so and so. In my country, the first issue wasn't to develop gas. In my president's mind, and he's really very strongly committed for environment issues, the first issue was to stop flaring gas. We started that in 2007. We had a decree to stop flaring gas. But the companies privately said, we don't have enough gas to develop it to, 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 to add value, to, to, to have uh, plants or units to make uh, LNG and so and so, even LPG. So from 2007 until now, we have been flaring gas all the time and, and, and more and more gas. So finally, we decided to use that gas for, for, for generating electricity. And finally, we found that the potential of gas in Congo was very huge. Then we have that project we're starting in December for LNG, but mainly to export LNG, <laughs> not, for, not for the market, national market. So now, now in the same time, we, 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 we want to stop flaring associated gas, which was the situation for so long time. And now we have to face this new challenge of natural gas, how to use it for the profit and the benefit of the population first, and then how we can use it also to increase the revenues for the country. So I think the first issue is that one, to have a right vision about that new challenge. After saying that, I think now this is time for Africa to have the best knowledge of the potential in terms of gas. I see so many discoveries uh, almost every year. We have a new player. I, I, I hope to, to, to make a joke saying that one day we'll have all the 53, 4 or 5 African countries being gas producers. Good thing. So now we, we have to, to put some money to have good surveys, to have good studies, to have a good evaluation of the potential of all the countries, which means of Africa. Then we need to have an African vision about gas to make the promotion of that gas, to make it be explored, then produced, to make it, as I said, for the profit of the, our population first. As many people say, we need to have investment because even if you know the potential, if you don't drill, and drilling means investment. By drilling, you will know if really you have a confirmation that the potential means you have reserves. And based on reserves, then you can start thinking, developing the, the, the prospect, and the field, and so and so and so. Then you need investors, which means you need money. We, we must be clear, the pressure on banks, investors, the, the, the one who had money, the pressure on them to stop investing in uh, fossil oils is already there. That's why we really, really, really giving full support to the idea, the project, it's more than an idea of having an African bank for energy. One day we will miss money for our fossil energy. We will miss money. Even the IOC, they will have maybe not access to money except their own money if they have enough. So the question of financing fossil oil and gas will become crucial and critical. We need new solution, innovative, African one, but maybe, I hope, with IOCs, because they still need to produce, they need, still need to make money on oil and gas, they're still investing. In my country, they're investing in exploration strongly. So this is a big issue we have for that. 
After that, yes, we have the big issue of uh, human capital. Okay. We, have, we need people. So, well wait. trained, right people for gas. It's a new business, it's another business. I'm an engineer. My, my basic graduation is, is mechanical electricity and oil. I've been working for 20 years for oil. But gas is another thing. It's not story, another story. It's, 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 it's quite different. So it needs another kind of skills for that. So we need to start right now. We, we need to have institutes, universities, schools to train African people for gas. This is the future. This is a new, new future, the new challenge. We need that. And this is my, my I, I, I want to stop there. My last comment. We really, I don't know if my young brother, former minister of um, oil and gas in Equatorial Guinea is here. He has been battling, struggling very, very strongly to have in African infrastructure for gas. We need African infrastructure for gas because we need African markets for gas. That will be the way for us even if the international market is not playing the game, the way for us to have a gas African economy working because we, we, we will be one of the biggest markets in 20 years. So we need infrastructure, pipelines, storages, facilities, port facilities for gas, for gas, and why not including oil? That I think the basic condition, the basic topics, the basic challenges we need to face strongly, seriously, mm -hmm. together, if we want Africa to become really the biggest player. It, it can't happen tomorrow in terms of gas challenge. So, th th and that, thank you, Minister. That's a very compre comprehensive answer that's actually taken us well into the second uh, part of the discussion, which is, which is really good. You've, you've set the scene uh, very well there from, from the angle of, of, of local content, from the angle of, of an African scale market and for, from the angle of how we create the right uh, environment for investment as well and drill. So um, I, I'm going to come to effectively the two, two, dr two big drillers in on the panel today. So Bellamino, Mike, do you want to just talk about your views on, uh, on, on, on particularly the market but also the, 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 the environment for investment? Yeah, and I think it's, it's very important. There are four factors that we think, listening to the minister, that are critical to be able to develop gas resource, uh, certainly from a, an IOC's perspective. You, you need very good resource, which the minister rightly says, let's hope every country has it, but not every country has it. We're fortunate to have it in Senegal and Mauritania, but you do need a really good quality resource. And unless you have that, you have nothing to start with, and you have to have done your work on that. Secondly, you need a very supportive government. Uh, we've heard today from all the governments how supportive they are, the right fiscal terms, the right approach, how do you incentivize, how do you do local content, that's critical. Again, where we're operating, Senegal and Mauritania, we couldn't have more supportive governments. But I think the two uh, difficult ones in relation to this are, and the minister referred to, access to financing. Uh, African countries cannot borrow at the same rate. Uh, they cannot borrow at the same rate as a super major, in fact, uh, and we cannot borrow at the same rate as a super major. That is a big issue. But the one I actually really want to focus on from an environmental perspective is these need to be uh, fresh thinking, new approaches. Uh, yes, and, and no doubt there are super major friends in the audience, there was a day where you would bring a super major in, they would take 80%, they give 10% to the, to, the, to the country. There's another, maybe another company in there. It's a $20 billion project. It takes 20 years to develop. That's just, that's just not going to happen anymore. So you have to be in a completely different space in thinking, uh, both from an African country perspective and from the type of IOC that you want to work with, to say, how do you do small-scale, modular projects 
get to market quickly, get to the internal market quickly across the board. How do you do it at low cost, low carbon? What's the, what are the real issues at play? We would say we've tried to do that. We've now got the fastest LNG project ever, Greenfield Offshore, with our project in Senegal, Mauritania, with BP and, and, our, and our NOC partners. But there needs to be more of that, and it needs to be quicker, and it needs to be more nimble, and it needs to be more innovative, to use the minister's words. And in that project, there is a, there is a, a super major with, with an 80% stake, is there? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything again. I love super majors. But they, uh, there has to be a different way of doing this. There has to be a different yep. way of financing. The minister says maybe an African energy bank, for example. Yep. Otherwise, we're just going to get stuck in a bit of the old ways. And super majors are under more pressure to decarbonize than many other areas. And you, and you sort of touched on there another important fact, which is you've been dealing with uh, Mauritania and Senegal, and, and the two governments have gone on very well. And so as you brought that project home, the, the, whole, the whole process has been from, from outside in looks quite smooth. I mean, you had COVID in the middle of it and you didn't miss too much of a beat. So um, I, I please continue the conversation. Sure, I think I just want to add two things to what he said. I think besides the four factors you've mentioned, it's also important to have you know, the private sector drive a lot of this project, right? So, I mean, if you go to Nigeria, we have the West Africa gas pipeline that has been built, supplying gas from Nigeria to Bini, Togo, and Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, it's creating a regional market, but, you know, it's today half of the time empty for all sorts of reasons uh, in there, as I said. So, it's important to build, you know, have the right kind of private sector participation to ensure that these projects are economical and they, you know, create a return uh, to the country. And, you know, one of the reasons why some of this struggle is then the affordability of, you know, the end products in the country. So let's say electricity, for instance, right, where a lot of this gas is used to fire thermal power plants. In Nigeria today, Sahara Group on any given day provides 20 to 25 percent of the power that is generated uh, in Nigeria. But we're struggling and short of gas. Why so? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, it's kind of, you know, there's, it's sold at a subsidized price. So it's, you know, you make more money exporting. So then exports are prioritized. Why has government been unable to raise prices for gas locally? And I think it's, they've looked and said, you know, they don't believe, you know, a market price might be affordable. So it's critical then to drive this that we take market-based principles to, uh, you know, to enable that whatever infrastructure is put in place becomes pretty successful. Finally, Angola's view. Yes, um, I would anchor on the ideas expressed on local content. Um, the nature of these uh, projects, gas projects, as we've seen on oil, they are cyclic and uh, you don't expect a lot of uh, employment, but uh, if you can leverage uh, with the other type of industries like uh, Angola is in need of um, uh, developing the mining uh, industry using gas there. Uh, we already spoken about uh, the um, fertilizers. So basically, it's a leverage chip for to to put on on to work uh, other uh, types of industries. Then you will see that uh, in terms of uh, local content, uh, people would not just uh, stick to the gas development, but will be employed on several other sectors. Uh, this also, as the minister said, and it's also members of the panel said that um, human capital need to be developed there along with those uh, projects to have the uh, industrialization of the continent. Very good. So um, I'm aware that we're unfortunately on an abbreviated uh, session due to, due to the timings today. Um, I, I don't want to leave the stage without, so, we, so we, we've talked about the, the aspirations, opportunities, or we've talked about what is needed, uh, unfortunately in a very quick way, what's needed to bring this over the line. What I'd like to do is just take a moment and have every member of the panel talk about the, the, the just transition, the energy poverty angle very, very briefly, the role of natural gas in, in, in relieving and removing energy poverty, there's a goal to do that by 2030. It's very ambitious, right? So um, 
Minister, can we stop with you? Yeah, thank you. You know, really, according to what we, 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 we can understand as a meaning of uh, having a just and equitable uh, transition, gas is a chance. It's really an opportunity for so many reasons. First of all, because the European Commission now, they have decided and said that gas is green energy. It's a clean energy. So now we can develop gas without wondering, worrying about the impacts on climate change, or carbon emission, because it's a clean energy. It's one of the solutions for the transition, even a solution for after the transition. It's, it's one of the energy for the future. So having so much gas for Africa is a new big opportunity. Second, second, second thing, second chance. Uh, we African leaders and the African continent, and uh, that, that's also what OPEC says, there is a direct link for us between having a just and equitable transition and eradicating energy poverty. For that, gas is very good solution because having gas can accelerate the access to electricity in my country right now. Even by using, you know, it was associated gas, not natural one. 7% of electricity is coming from gas now. So we, we, we think that we will be able to accelerate the access to gas. And, and, and now my, my president, my government, my country is talking about not access to gas, but access, universal access to gas, to, to, to electricity, excuse me. The, the, the target now is to give electricity to anyone in Congo, Brazzaville, and we should have the same one for Africa because we have enough gas to give electricity to, uh, to, to, to population. All the time we say 900 million people, they don't have access to modern gas and cooking. Now we have gas. So I hope that next time, next year, we will change that figure because I'm used to have the same one being said for so many times. So by LPG, by any way, we, 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 we can change that situation. But at the same time, at the same time, in terms of uh, local content, as we said, at the same time, in terms of uh, giving the way to, pro to provide to produce fertilizers, so to promote agriculture, so to promote um, uh, eradication of, uh, of uh, food poverty, gas are more impact internally than oil can have. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very good chance, opportunity for Africa, having so much gas and probably more gas in the future because it will be, for me, the best, the best solution in terms of what we think we should promote as just and equitable transition, energy transition. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Palomino? Yes, um, I believe that um, Sometimes there is an impression that um, those that uh, possess uh, uh, fossil fuel resources will be the one insisting in the continued use. But if you have um, hydropowers or other sources of renewables, uh, sun, wind, they are very sensitive to climate changes. Any drought can cause you blackouts like lack of electricity. And the best backup to me would be gas. If you want set up to use gas for backups, etc., that will go a long way. And therefore, it's um, not replaceable that zone. It should remain in the mix for quite some time. So a multi-fuel transition, but gas is, gas is the powerhouse. Right. Uh, Emmanuel. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at most of Africa today is really powered by diesel and petrol generators, right? In Nigeria, we have, I think, installed capacity of almost 60 gigawatts of diesel and petrol generators. So simply improving on-grid 
access to power via natural gas. You know, a simple, effective solution like that is, you know, saves a lot of CO2 going to go into the environment and puts us on that path uh, to transition. Also, using LPG as well for cooking instead of firewood and kerosene. And, and, and I think those are kind of the key, more short-term things that we can do on that transition because everybody tends to be looking out to 2050, 2060 net zero. But I think there's quite a lot that can be done today actually to already get us on that pathway to the transition. I'm Mike. Thank you, and I think uh, the minister really said it all, but uh, I used to be a European public servant and the rank hypocrisy of the European Union in relation to this has been quite extraordinary. Uh, we went to visit Brussels and Berlin uh, last year and they were quite happily saying, well, we'd like to buy your LNG from Africa. Oh, but by the way, uh, Africa needs to go immediately green uh, and straight into, into uh, green energy rather than using... Uh, I think that's changed, Minister. I think we now have that recognition that gas is, is uh, very much part of the future. And we've just seen that recognised in the uh, 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 Just Energy Transition Partnership with Senegal, where... Uh, EU, France, Canada, UK, Germany will be helping Senegal, which already has 30% renewable, go down a renewable route, but at the same time explicitly recognises that Senegal needs to be able to develop its gas resources. And it would be quite nice for all African countries to have the opportunity. The West, the North has ridden that hydro, hydrocarbon powered escalator to the top of development, turned off the power and said, the rest of you, come on, walk up the stairs if you feel like it, but without being able to be electricity powered through the gas. So I think that is where we would need to use, uh, use the gas. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Mike. So um, we are draws to a close this um, very abbreviated uh, discussion on a really interesting topic, uh, uh, and I look forward to staying connected with this conversation. Uh, what, what we effectively synthesised was, was it, obviously it all starts with having the right resource, and then at the government level, not just individual governments removing bureaucracy, but governmental collaboration across countries and ultimately across Africa, that scaling up to create the African market, to create the environment uh, for, for, for monetization, not domestically, but also externally, to, to bring in capital for investments in, in, in more industrialization, more growth, uh, improvements in living standards, and, and uh, the, the ability for Africa to grow its own local content and do more and more of this work um, within its own borders, uh, and ultimately energy self-sufficiency to drive the industrialization that is needed to support the, 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 the world's biggest working population by 2040. Um, I'd like to thank my panel very, very much for joining me today and for their insights. If we could thank the panel and thank you all for joining us.